Good morning and welcome to worship on this Sunday morning here at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. It is our second Sunday of Advent, and wherever you are, we are glad you are here with us today. There are some announcements I'd like to bring to your attention to, um, today after this service at 11. Our Sunday school for ages K to 6 will be happening, so if you get that link, great, join in. If you don't receive any of our messages or any of our announcements, let us know, and we will be glad to get that information to you. You can just email office at St. Mark's United, or it's St. Mark's UMCSD dot org. Tomorrow evening, we will have Holy Communion via Zoom. Pastor Darren will be leading that. And then on Wednesday at 1, we will have Bible study. And then our last conversation of grief during the holidays, and that will be at 6.30. We are ordering poinsettias in memory and in honor of loved ones, and so again, you can contact the church office for that information. And in case you haven't heard, haven't seen the email, we are closing our campus to better align ourselves at the reduction of COVID-19. Beginning tomorrow morning through the end of the month, the campus will be closed to visitors and um, those who are just here for whatever purpose. If you are essential workers, you will work with a schedule. If you need to come to the campus, please contact Pastor Darren, and she will be holding the calendar on that to make sure we minimize cross traffic. There is a lot going on. So again, if you haven't had a chance to get our newsletter, or any of our announcements, let us know. We would love to have you join us for all that is going on. And let us take a moment now to remember that this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Covenant God, you send us messengers to cleanse and refine us for your coming. Help us endure the mirror of the prophet's message that we may see you when you suddenly appear among us through Christ our Lord. Amen.
We light this candle as a symbol of the purity of heart only God can bring. For he shall purify his people like gold and silver until they shine forth his righteousness. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Three more weeks till he arrives. He who's filled and changed our lives. Let the bells ring loud and clear. Let the people shout and cheer. Three more weeks till he arrives. Good morning and welcome to Children's Time. Today is the second Sunday in Advent. We are getting closer and closer to the birth of Jesus at Christmas. Sometimes it feels like we must wait a long time. If you've ever had to wait for your parents to come home, you might feel sad when they are away. When they return, you might wanna be comforted. When you fall and scrape your knee and need to make that hurt go away, you also might wanna be comforted. What's something that you do when you need some comfort and care from someone you love? One way I like to be comforted is I get a hug from someone that loves and cares for me. Hugs can make us feel safe. Hugs can make us feel better. I think sometimes even our pets feel better when we hug them. There's a verse in the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah that says, Comfort, comfort my people. The Lord takes care of his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms. He carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have had little ones. What do you think of when Isaiah says he will gather the lambs in his arms? Maybe a shepherd hugging his sheep? Did you know that when Jesus spoke of his followers, he called them lambs or sheep? You are one of God's sheep and God is your shepherd. When you are scared or hurt, God wants to take care of you. Last week, Pastor Jerry created a stable with some grass and hay and a shoe box. Uh, so this week I created my own. You can see that I have some grass and some leaves that I got from outside. And I added to mine a little, uh, a little shelter. And I have some fun stuff to add to it. So the first one is a manger. These are the little things to hold it up. You can see it's made out of Play-Doh and you can see it's empty. There's nothing in it. We're just getting ready. Nothing in it yet. Actually, I made some hay to put in it. So we're going to put some little hay. And then I have a donkey. So that's fun. A little donkey visiting. And then like our story from today, a sheep. Here's a, here's a sheep right here. These animals will remind us, this one too, <laughs> these animals will remind us that God loves and comforts us just like a shepherd comforts the animals. Amen.
Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but yet the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. Who will prepare your way? The voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean county countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandal. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, through your word, all things came into being. Your voice continues to speak to us, guiding us to your perfect will. But there are other voices that clamor for our attention. Help us to hear your voice above all other voices that seek to distract us so we can follow your call and see your perfect will for our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. One of the things I am truly longing for after this pandemic has ended is live theater. I love going and hearing the interpretation of words, sometimes familiar phrases, reimaged for a live audience. Being a seasoned season holder, there have been times when I have napped during a show. But hey, it was cats and cats are soothing. 
There was also a show I walked out of during the intermission because sometimes show descriptions can be very misleading. But for the most part, I'm delighted with the entertainment and occasionally I am also educated. Godspell is one such musical where I learn to interpret scripture through a different perspective. Godspell debuted in 1971 and became quite a hit because of its edgy music from the Gospel of Matthew parables. When I first heard it, I was young in age and even younger in my understanding of theology. I was being raised in a much more conservative denomination and therefore mesmerized by the interpretation of Matthew's text by Stephen Schwartz. Listening to this innovative soundtrack, it was as if I heard someone say, here is the good news you have been waiting to hear. Some of you may not be familiar with this musical, so I encourage you to look it up on the internet and listen to it. Some of you may nap, some may turn it off, but some people may actually hear something new in this unfamiliar medium of God's message. For those who do know this musical, it has been almost 50 years since it first came onto the scene, and it still resonates with me when I hear the words from John the Baptist, prepare the way of the Lord. But this isn't where the Gospel of Mark begins. The first words in the Gospel beginning are the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And yes, it is good news. The Word of God for the people of God has come for the salvation of the world. What people had heard from their teachings in Scripture was being heralded by a charismatic leader among them. John the Baptizer was a Jewish itinerant preacher in early first century A.D. He may or may not have been what was expected, but his message was clear. The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. John was a leader who came bringing good news to the people who needed some good news. Others, however, were not quite as excited to hear John's message, calling out, prepare the way of the Lord, because it defied their roles as leaders of Israel. Now, remembering that Rome had occupied the land and people of Judah, and the Pharisees and the priests and the scribes had kind of laid back and made themselves comfortable in the administration of Rome. They didn't respond well to anyone else heralding the good news that the Lord was coming. However, day by day, people listened to John and heard what he had to say. They began learning their lessons well and saying to others, I heard someone say. This was not what the ruling administration of Judah wanted the people to do. They wanted Israel to live according to the executive orders and decrees that Rome established. But God had another plan. A Savior had been born to live among the people, to teach them a new way of life, to live their lives outside of fear and bondage to a government filled with rules and laws to live their lives fully with faith, hope, and love in and for God was what God wanted the people to do. On November 3rd of this year, Quaker author and activist Parker Palmer wrote, for those of us who want to see democracy survive and thrive, and we are legion, the heart is where everything begins. 
that grounded place in each of us where we can overcome fear, rediscover that we are members of one another, and embrace the conflicts that threaten democracy as openings to new ways of life for us and our nation. He continues, all of the tensions we must hold in our personal and our political life, perhaps the most fundamental and most challenging, is standing and acting with hope in the tragic gap. On the one side of the gap, we see a hard realities of life, the realities that can crush our spirit and defeat our hopes. On the other side of the gap, we see real world possibilities, lives as we know it can be because we have seen it before that way. If we are to stand and act with hope in this tragic gap and to do it for the long haul, we cannot settle for mere effectiveness as the ultimate measure of our failure or success. Yes, we want to be effective in our pursuit of important goals, but we must not judge ourselves by mere effectiveness, but by a higher standard the standard called faithfulness. Are we faithful to the community on which we depend, to doing what we can in response to its pressing needs? Are we faithful to the better angels of our nature and what they call forth in us? Are we faithful to the eternal conversation of the human race, speaking and listening in a way that takes us closer to truth? Are we faithful to the call of the courage that summons us to witness to the common good even against great odds? When faithfulness is our standard, we are more likely to sustain our engagement with tasks that will never end. Doing justice, loving mercy, and calling the beloved community into being. Only those who lead with faith in God can stand in the tragic gap for long periods of time as we feed the hungry, advocate for clean water, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, visit the sick and the imprisoned. Others, tragically, will have and have let their pride become their God. As John said in today's passage, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to step down, stoop down, and untie the throngs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So what do we do with this good news that will cause us to work hard and perhaps without reward? We're called to be like John, to humble ourselves to the will of God and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Now, I'm not saying that we begin wearing camel hair and leather belts while eating locusts and wild honey, but as ones who do the work of announcing, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight, we are called to give glory to God in the highest and not claim victory for ourselves. Theologian Lillian Daniel writes about this passage from Mark in this way. Most of us want to get the credit. We want to be known as the one who got the job done. No politician would ever stop to thank the person she or he replaced from their rival party. Newly elected senators and representatives seldom acknowledge the work that has happened before they arrive on Capitol Hill. Rather, they behave as though their appearance on this scene marks the beginning of time itself. Some people will say, I have done it the best. No one has done more. But John does not do that. 
John recognizes that he is not the lone savior of Israel, but he is part of God's plan, the one who calls people together to listen to the message that they have heard from others. The message from Isaiah, from the psalmist, from the chronicles of the leaders before them. Abraham, Ruth, Deborah, David. None were perfect, but all were faithful. Through the words and the works of the matriarchs and the patriarchs of our faith, the good news began to spread, God is with us. And this is good news that we can still rely upon today because it gives us the strength to do the work that we are inspired to do by the Holy Spirit, work that is filled with grace and justice and truth. It may not always be peaceful work, but it will be good work, good work by making the path straight for all people, not just those who feel empowered by leadership, by wealth, or by birthright. The work of the faithful will be kingdom-building work here and now for people of all generations to come. Individually and collectively, the church is called to model our lives after John being humbled and proclaiming the coming of the Lord. And then we are to do the work of Jesus, loving God and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Some people will hear the good news by your words, the songs you sing, the notes you write, the food you deliver, and some people will hear it by the comforting words you offer when you pray with them and for them. But some people may not recognize your message right away, but through the work of the Holy Spirit, they won't forget how you made them feel a bit of peace just when they needed it. And who knows, then one day they may go on to proclaim, I heard from someone that there is good news, and now I believe that good news is true. Our work in this kingdom will be forever ongoing, and we will probably make mistakes along the way. But as long as we continue sharing the good news and working as we are inspired by God, we are doing a very good thing. We're not called to be perfect. We're just called to be faithful. Each one of us has been given a gift and a talent, some more than others, but nonetheless, all of us are empowered by the gift of the Holy Spirit, which allows us individually and collectively as the church to journey with others to a singular place, the gathering place at the throne of God. It may be a challenge it may be a challenge as we continue living under these restrictions that we're currently experiencing. But make no mistake, God continues to lead us in new and innovative ways of sharing the good news. And as long as we continue to listen to the Spirit of God and share what we have learned from others, one day others will actually say, Prepare the way of the Lord. May it be so. Amen.
We pray this day, O oh God, as people have for thousands of years, with great expectation for your promise to be fulfilled on earth. We remember the prophet's vision of a voice crying out in the wilderness, making straight a path for the one you would send for our salvation. We still hope for the righteous branch to come forth, a descendant of Jacob and David, who will rule with authority and bring violence and oppression to rest. Into the darkness, even now, we pray, come, Lord Jesus, come. We pray for the world in its deep suffering, for neighbors near and far, anxious with hunger and poverty, nations still torn open by war and terror, and all of your creation, abused and depleted. We pray for the unemployed and for all who face the uncertainties of paying the coming bills. We pray for those who are grieving those lost to COVID-19 and for the healthcare workers who continue to put themselves in harm's way each and every day. We pray for our deep ideological differences that falsely divide us, neighbor against neighbor, child against parent. And for all who weigh heavy on our hearts this day, who suffer in grief, illness, or loneliness, who we lift to you now in the silence. We pray, come, Lord Jesus, come. In this season of waiting, we pray into the silence that your word would be known among us, that your promise would be made real among us so that we might continue to have hope. Strengthen and embolden us to hear where you are calling. Open our eyes to see the vision of your kingdom and impart your spirit to us to live within us so that we might truly serve as your body in this world becoming the transformation we so desperately hope to see when we pray, come, Lord Jesus, come. In the name of the one we anticipate with hope, through whom the world was and is ever changed, and praying together as he taught us, we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because we have been given such a great gift in receiving this word and this good news of God's grace given to us, it is our privilege and our responsibility to share that good news with others. One way that we are able to do that is in the offering of our gifts so that the ministries of this church and of the church universal might continue. We uh, ask and invite your gifts with thanksgiving uh, that you might uh, send in your checks or offer your offerings online. Uh, if you visit stmarksumcsd.org, there is a Donate Now button. But however you might be giving of yourself in this season so that this good news might be proclaimed, we give thanks. <laughs>
God of all righteousness, receive these gifts of gratitude, the offerings of our lives. Purify them with your refining fire so that they may serve your purposes and shine with your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we leave this worship service, remember that we don't leave alone. We leave with God who is with us. As we go out and proclaim, prepare the way of the Lord, let us do so with joy in this Advent season. Amen. <laughs>